In this short video, I'm going to talk about uh, buttons, sliders, and alarms within Artisan Roaster Scope or Artisan Roasting Software. Um, I use buttons, sliders, and alarms to automate certain aspects of the, the, the profile recording that Artisan does, and I'm also able to use it to automate the actual roasting process itself. Now I'm able to do that because in my hot top roaster that I use here at home, I have installed an Arduino based uh, HTRI or hot top roaster interface board that connects between my laptop and the roasting the roaster's motherboard and will allow me to control the roaster from Artisan. It's it's very cool. Uh, I'll post a link to the where I purchased the board in the video. Um, you can see down at the bottom I have eight visible buttons, and these buttons configure dis different aspects of the roast. Um, I have four for heat, and I have four for fan. Um, in each case, I have a, a plus five and a plus three, and then I have a minus five and a minus three. So what happens is when I click these buttons, um, it will reduce the heat. You can see the slider over here moved, or it'll increase the heat based on the value that I have put there. So you can see now we're at, at power 5. Uh, and if I were actually connected to the roaster, which I'm not, this would uh, send a command to the roaster to increase the heat by 5. To configure these buttons, we go up to the Config menu and select Events. And then we're going to select the Buttons submenu. And here you can see nine buttons actually, um, but only eight are visible. I have one button that's not visible and that's because I use this button, um, I trigger this button programmatically with an alarm and I'll show you that alarm in just a minute. Um, but the, the basic use of this button is when the environment temperature reaches 401 degrees Fahrenheit, I just want to record that event. I want to know when that happened in the roast. Um, and I want to know that because uh, I read Carl Staub's um, theory about the um, optimal chemical reaction temperature. And he, believed, he believes that um, between 401 and 424 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, that is the optimal temperature for the, um, the chemical reactions that bring out the, the best flavor of a coffee. So I just want to be able to see in my roast when I hit 401 so that I can tell how long I was there. Um, it would be great if I could configure Artisan to record that as an event and show it as, um, show that period. And I could probably do that. I just need to work on doing it. I haven't. Um, so in a, in a moment, I'll show you the alarm that triggers this button or that clicks this button. Um, you can also see the eight visible buttons I have, two, uh, four for fan, four for power. Um, this command is what gets sent to the roaster through the HTRI board that I have installed. So if you don't have a hot top, this command is going to be different for you. Uh, you'll have to look on Artisan's web page. Uh, you'll just have to search the web to find that command for your specific setup. Um, for mine, in this command, the IO3 indicates the fan, and OT1 indicates power, and then the curly brackets, in this case, the empty curly brackets means we're going to send whatever value is here through to the roaster. You can also hardwire values in here, so if I wanted to always turn my fan to 50, at a certain point, I could create a button and put a 50 in here, and then every time I click that button, it will tell the roaster to go to fan 50 at that moment. It will also record in the profile an event that says that the operator changed the fan to 50 at this point in time. So that becomes very handy if you have tasks that you do repeatedly within your roast, and everybody does, you can then document them and you can, you can see that in your profile when you're analyzing them later. 
So to get to alarms, um, it's the same config menu and then you just select alarms and that's going to show all of the alarms that you have configured in this profile. You're able to save your alarms as a separate file so you can have multiple different packages or groups of alarms depending on how you're going to roast for that specific roast. And that makes it very handy to swap these alarms in and out. I don't swap them in and out that often. Um, I like to keep things simple, so I try and stick with one group of alarms only. But I will save them when I'm working on um, something specific. So here we can see this is HTRI NoFlix. So that tells me that these alarms are specifically uh, configured for my HTRI board and it's I, I was working on avoiding the flick and the crash that Scott Rao talks about in his book about roasting. So we can see that I have 11 alarms and I have one that I have shut off. Um, this alarm doesn't execute but it's still there. I could tweak it, work on it. Um, I don't remember what it is but I don't uh, I wasn't using it I'm not using it now. But your basic structure is you have uh, up here you have your alarm status on or off. Um, you can make one alarm dependent on another. So here I've said that alarm number four only executes if alarm number three has executed. So if alarm three, the conditions were never met for alarm three, alarm four will never trigger. Uh, and that just makes it easier to have some control over the alarms, some conditional control. Uh, I, I use it infrequently, clearly. Um, and the same with but not. So I could say if alarm three triggered, but not alarm two, I would put two in here. And then if two did not trigger, but, but three did trigger, then four will, will uh, trigger as well if the condition for four is met. So there is a level of, of uh, complexity you can bake into that uh, if you want to. Um, the way I use alarms, I, I largely like to uh, make my profiles appear consistent when I go back and look at them. So two rules that I like are the beginning and the end. So rule number two and rule number 11 um, basically start and stop the recording at uh, consistent times within the, the roast so that when I look at my profiles I see a nice beginning curve coming up and then I can see my charge and the temperature dropping and then at the end of the roast same thing I can see a nice drop and then I got 15 seconds of recording as um, everything's cooling down and then it'll stop recording. Uh, before I had these rules, what would happen is I would turn on Artisan software so that I could see the bean temp and environment temp over here in the LEDs. And when I saw that, I would forget to click the start recording and then I would charge the roaster with unroasted beans and I wouldn't see my LED or my um, the graph lines moving over here. And then I'd say, oh crap, click the start recording and then that profile would have started as the bean temps were dropping and I wouldn't know what temperature I uh, dropped or charged the roaster so my times would be off and it would just be a train wreck so this way when I start my roast at about 350 degrees I'll turn the software on and it's not recording so the it's not doing anything but displaying in the LED over here on the right my environment temperature and my bean temperature and then at 390 degrees Fahrenheit it automatically starts recording because typically I charge beans at 400 or above on my roaster and that's gonna that's gonna differ on yours I don't want to get too far into that um, but your charge temperature could very well differ from mine and that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong um, so you can see in these fields if we look at alarm number two, uh, you can see that I it starts from the on. So as soon as I click on this uh, this alarm, can then trigger. 
uh, if we, we could have a number of options here that we could use um, to kind of bind that in so that it doesn't trigger when we don't want it to. Uh, because for example, um, when you charge the beans, there's a, there's a drop as the probe normalizes and the beans, um, the bean temperature normalizes with the environment temperature. And then there's a, a rise again. So there will be in your profile points where you, you pass, let's say, 250 degrees Fahrenheit twice. Um, this field, the from field, will allow you to say, I only want to um, trigger on 300 degrees after the turning point. So you could select that here. So that makes this even more handy. You can also add the time. So you say, you could say, as I did here, I don't want this alarm to trigger until 15 seconds after the drop. So once the drop is either detected or I've clicked the drop button, um, 15 seconds after that event, uh, the roasting software Artisan is going to do this action, which is shut off recording. Uh, the description is arbitrary in this case. There are cases where the description is a meaningful value. So for example, if you recall when I showed you the buttons, down here there was a hidden button. My first button was hidden. Uh, this alarm interacts with that button. So what this alarm says is the status is on, the alarm is on, um, there are no conditions bound to other alarms, but it happens after the turning point, any time after the turning point, if the uh, environment temperature is above 400 degrees, programmatically click button number one. So I'm going to, I'll go to the button in a second to show you the button again, but what this does is when the environment temperature of the roaster goes above 400, the second it hits 401, this alarm clicks that button for me and that will record in the profile an event. And then when I go back and I'm analyzing this profile, I can see exactly when the roast, the environment temperature on the roast went over 400 degrees or hit 401. So let's look at those buttons again. So we go to config, events, buttons, and you can see button number one simply records a description. It, uh, there is no action. There's no documentation. It just indicates 401. So Using a combination of buttons and alarms, you can automate um, a large portion of your profile recording. And you can make each profile more consistent, more predictable, more accurate when you go back to, to analyze them later. Uh, this way you can have confidence in the accuracy of your information and it, it makes roasting more enjoyable it also makes the analysis of your roasting process more accurate and uh, just better overall. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to use the comments section below to leave comments about the video itself or the content. Um, if you have any questions, uh, just post them below. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.